In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I recreated the Adidas Fever Nova football in Blender, and how you can use this method to create your own custom football models. This model was rendered using the Cycles render engine. First, click A and X to delete the default cube, light, and camera. Next, click Shift and A and insert an icosphere mesh. Navigate to the settings tab here and adjust the number of subdivisions to one. Now enter edit mode and ensure all vertices are highlighted by selecting the select vertices button and clicking A if the vertices aren't already highlighted. Press command plus B to insert a bevel and adjust the bevel by dragging your cursor. In the bevel settings, Select the vertices box in this tab here and change the width number to 0.35 and have the segments number set to 1. With the select edge button activated, click A and select all edges. Add in another bevel with command and B and adjust the width number here to 0.02. And make sure the edges box is selected and that the segments number is set to 2. Switch to the select faces button and click on a hexagon face. Then press shift plus G and choose area when this prompt appears, and repeat this process for a pentagon face. Press the comma button and select the normal option here, then press the full stop button and choose individual origins. Click G and Z to scale out these faces slightly, setting the Z number to 0.1. Switch to the edge select mode and then select these edges on the mesh. Press shift and G and choose face angles when this prompt appears. Duplicate these edges by clicking Shift and D, then press P and then select Separate by Selection when this window appears. This will create a separate mesh from those selected edges. We're going to use this mesh later on in the tutorial to create the stitches for the ball. So rename the new mesh object in the Collection tab and then hide it in the render view for now. Return to Edit Mode with the ball selected and reselect these edges. Then press Shift and G and select Face Angles. Add in another bevel by using Command plus B and adjust the width to 0.005. And here, make sure the edges box is selected and that the segments number is set to two. Navigate to the modifiers tab and add in a subdivision surface modifier to the mesh, setting both these numbers here to two. Then add in a cast modifier, and then finally right click on the mesh and select shade smooth, finish off the ball mesh. Now the Adidas Fever Nova ball I'm recreating features a dotted grey pattern on a standard ball mesh made out of hexagon and pentagon faces. I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator to create the texture pattern for my model, but you can use an alternative vector-based illustration software if you prefer. I'll start by creating an image texture for the hexagon section. So in a 3000 by 3000 pixel artboard, I'll add in a square of the base color as a background color on the artboard, followed by adding a hexagon shape and a series of circles. I'll align these circles to fill out the hexagon shape. Then I'll use the Shape Builder tool to remove the sections of the circles that I don't need. By selecting the circles and the hexagon, I'll drag across using the Shape Builder tool to cut them into individual shapes and delete the sections that don't fit within the hexagon. Once I'm happy with the design, I'll export the file as a JPEG or a PNG file. Next, back in Blender, Go to the UV Editing tab. In the window on the left, click on the Open button and import your exported image texture. In the window on the right, while in Object Mode, select the Ball Mesh and then go to the Material tab. Add in a new material and rename it. Then go to the icon next to the Base Color tab and change it to Image Texture. Click on the image icon and choose your imported image texture. Now you'll see your image texture projected onto your mesh. However, it's not formatted correctly and doesn't match the intended design. To fix this, with the face selection button turned on, click on one of the hexagon faces and then press command and plus twice to select the outer connecting faces. To enable this, go to edit, preferences, and then in the preferences menu, navigate to input and click emulate numpad. Here you'll see where the faces on your mesh have been projected onto the image texture. This means that the outlines of these faces need to be moved around the hexagon shape to get the pattern mapped properly. To do this, go to the right tab and in edit mode, with those faces selected, press U and then click unwrap. This will unwrap the model's faces as a hexagon shape. From here, move and scale the outlines of these selected faces around the shape of the hexagon by selecting all the outlines with A and then moving or scaling them using the same keys that you would on a 3D model by pressing S to scale, G to grab and R to rotate. You can also grab individual parts of the outlines and move them separately for better alignment. 
Now when we exit edit mode, you'll notice that the image texture has aligned pretty well on those selected faces. Now all we need to do is just repeat the steps for the other hexagon faces on the ball and then move the outlines of those faces into position on the image texture in the UV editing tab. And now with all the hexagon faces remapped on the image texture, the ball is starting to resemble the intended pattern. Now it's time to repeat these steps for the pentagon shape by going back into Illustrator and adding a pentagon shape of a similar size and adding that circle pattern to it. Then re-export that artboard as an image file and then replace that image file with the new one you've just created in both the UV editing tab as well as the image texture on your mesh's material. Then go through and select the pentagon faces just like the hexagon faces until you have added the image texture across the whole mesh to complete the repeated pattern. You are watching the master. <laughs> now for the rest of the ball model, I'm going to need to create these four Fever Nova patterns and the text and icons on this section here on the model. The easiest way to do this is by using images found on Google. For example, for the Fever Nova pattern, I found this vector image here and brought it into Photoshop and removed most of the background on this image. The more accurate the removal of the background, the better, but this can be sorted later on. Following this, I used a combination of the generative fill tool and the brush tool to remove these colors on the image so I had a clean version of the pattern. Then I exported this image and brought it into Adobe Illustrator. When imported into Illustrator, I then used the image trace effect. By doing this, I've created a vector version of that image. And just like cleaning up the overall ball pattern before with the hexagon and pentagon faces, I can select the miscellaneous vectors within this image using the shape builder tool and remove them from the image. I can also make these sections which have different colors match where appropriate. To complete one of the Fever Nova patterns, all I had to do was add in a image of the Adidas logo and then use the image trace tool to turn it into a vector and then place it into position. For the sections which are a little bit more complex, such as this section of the model here, I can use the image trace method once again, but this time a photograph of the ball after editing it in Photoshop and then adjusting the fill colors in Adobe Illustrator as well as using the smooth tool within Adobe Illustrator to neaten up some of the roughness caused by the image trace tool. After creating all of these new image textures that need to be added to our model, I'll make sure they're all placed on their own separate artboards and then export them all as separate PNG files. Then back into Blender, I'm going to select the ball mesh in edit mode and then selecting one of the hexagon faces, then click command and plus until I've selected the outer six faces around that hexagon. Then I'll click shift and D to duplicate these faces and then click P and select separate by selection to create a new mesh from these faces. I'll rename this mesh and then replace the current material that is on this mesh for a new one. Then I'll go into the UV editing tab and import one of the renders of our new image textures that we've just made in Illustrator on the left tab here. Then on the right tab in edit mode, I'm going to select the faces of our new mesh. Then by clicking U and clicking unwrap to unwrap those faces for UV editing. I'm going to go to the material tab and then scroll down to the settings and make sure that the blend mode is set to alpha blend. If you can't see this menu, switch from the cycles render engine to the EV render engine. Make the switch in the material tab and then switch back to cycles. Then well in the shading tab here, I'm going to select the faces on this mesh and then add to our new material, our imported image texture. This can be done by going to the material tab and clicking the base color icon, changing it to image texture, and then clicking the image icon and selecting our newly imported image texture. Then in our node setup here, I'm going to link the alpha of our image texture node here to the alpha on the principal BSDF shader. This will make this image texture transparent and appear visible over our full football model. Then go back to the UV editing tab and once again reposition the outlines of our selected faces and make sure they are aligned to where they should be on the ball. Now if you're struggling with the outlines of this mesh not really fitting with your image texture, then you probably need to reduce the size of the contents within your image texture. So I replaced this image of this Fever Nova pattern on the left tab with a re-render of it where the Fever Nova pattern was actually scaled down slightly and make sure the new image texture has been added to the material tab as well. Unless it's a solid color, you don't really want to scale your image texture to fit the whole of your artboard when creating it. Then I just go back into repositioning with the UV or wrap method. Now when editing, if you can't see this pattern over the top of your ball model on this new pattern mesh, then select the mesh and hold Shift and S to scale it up slightly and then it should appear above the football model. 
I knew where to place this pattern on these specific faces by looking at a lot of reference photos and looking at other 3D models that others have created of this football. After a couple of minutes, I'd gotten this pattern into place on the ball where I wanted it to be. And then with one of these Fever Nova image textures added, I repeated this step for the other image textures that I created in Illustrator, making sure they're in the correct position by using a lot of reference images of this football model. Now let's create the stitches on the ball for that extra bit of detail on the model. So let's select that set of vertices we made before and called stitches, and for now we'll also hide all the other meshes in our scene collection. So click on our stitches mesh and then go to edit mode and make sure the select vertices button has been checked. The first thing I need to do is reduce the number of vertices on these bits where the hexagons and pentagons connect. To do this, I'll select these four vertices, then click M and then select at center. And then I'll spend the next few minutes repeating this for all the parts of the mesh where these four vertices appear. Once that has been finished, I'll then go into object mode and duplicate this mesh and then right click, click convert to and then select curve. This as expected turns the mesh object into a curve. You can then delete or hide the other mesh in our scene collection. Then after deselecting our new curve mesh, I'll add in a cube mesh. Scale it down until it's very small at the center of our frame. Then in edit mode with this mesh selected, I'll scale it out on the Y axis and then add in a loop cut. Then move these center vertices up on the Z axis and add a subdivision surface modifier to the cube. Then move these vertices from this loop cut up a little further on the Z axis. Then in object mode, right click the mesh and select shade smooth. Then go to the modifiers tab and add an array modifier to the mesh. Add in some more copies and change the factor X amount to 1.1. Then go into edit mode, select the whole mesh and then rotate it so that the array modifier has the copies of the mesh appearing side to side like this. Next, add a curve modifier to the mesh and select the stitches curve. Then increase the number on the array modifier until it no longer follows the curve path. Now with the curve effect only partially completing our stitches mesh, we need to do some further amends to complete the stitching on the ball. Make the ball layer visible and create a copy of our stitches cube mesh. Apply all the modifiers on this mesh to make all of the stitches part of one singular mesh. Next, duplicate this mesh layer and rotate the mesh to cover up the vertices around the other sets of faces on the ball like so. And then to complete the ball, repeat this process as many times as required until the entire stitch pattern across these meshes is aligned with the full layout of our ball mesh. Use the ball mesh for reference and be sure to hold down shift while rotating for more detailed movement. Now, when these meshes have been created, there will likely be some overlap between parts of different meshes. So to fix this, go into edit mode and with the face selection tool turned on, select the overlapping stitches on these mesh layers and click X to delete them. And repeat this until there are no more overlapping stitches. Then when completed, select all these meshes and join them together to create one single stitches mesh. And when viewing in the render viewport, if your stitches aren't visible, scale them out slightly by holding Shift and S until it appears as if the stitches are part of your ball mesh. Then add in a dark grey coloured material to the mesh and to help it blend better over the ball model, I like to load the alpha number on the material tab, giving the material a little bit of transparency so the look of the stitches don't stand out too much. And with that, you have the stitching complete. Then to complete this model, apply all the modifiers on all the separate meshes, then select all the parts of the ball mesh and stitches, and then right click and click join. To combine everything into one single ball model. And if you want to create an animation similar to the one that I've used for this ball model, then follow this tutorial by Ducky 3 d which I used as the base for my animation with some tweaks to the lighting, camera, and animation of my model. And that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to click that like button and please consider subscribing and leave a comment on what other sports motion graphics tutorials I should be creating. And if you want to create some more football related models, then check out this video on how I created the Champions League trophy just using Blender.